it's flying day. Woo! I think I think Noodles is struggling over there. <laughs> Noodles, what are you doing? So my flight is at 8.30 p.m. tonight. It's an overnight flight, which means I get to London at 10.30 a.m. their time. So the whole goal is to sleep eight hours on the plane. That's how long the flight is, or at least get a good chunk of sleep in there. It's just me, no taco on this trip, just I, uh, and then my friends taking care of noodles. Driving my way to the Nashville airport, feel free to make fun of my rusty windshield wiper holders. I drive an absolute junker, so I just accept it. And then just waiting for my flight. I had tons of time in between when my flight was. Um, I did have Mr. Bread with me, who is my little pillow that I got from Tokyo when I visited. I was actually in business class this time around, and they give you like pillows and blankets and everything, so I actually really didn't need Mr. Bread. I could have just not packed him and had more room for other things. But yeah, the flight was amazing. I didn't have anyone sitting next to me. I had tons of leg room. I pretty much just drank like two bottles of those little mini wines and then sacked out after we ate our little dinner meal. And by the time I woke up on the flight, it was daytime, it was morning time, and we were landing in London. So then I had to figure out the train system, which actually wasn't that bad. The bad part was when I got off of the train. I went in the opposite direction of my hotel, so I ended up walking like miles the wrong way when it could have been way easier. So I, I was lugging around like 80 pounds of luggage and it was only a roller bag that had two wheels. So I had to be like tilted the whole time. So it was not easy. And I was walking forever in like the heat and I was wearing like pants and a sweater and everything because planes are cold. So it was just absolutely miserable for me. Oh, I'm dead. This is uh, the looks <laughs> after lugging 80 pounds of luggage and walking everywhere trying to get to my hotel. <laughs> In hot heat! <laughs> so the whole goal was to stay awake in order to adjust to the new time zone. That ended up not working whatsoever. I ended up taking a shower and then I was absolutely exhausted and I just fell asleep. I woke up to a handyman person busting into my room saying that my shower was leaking and I was like super startled and like what is happening? That's what I woke up and was like okay I need to plan something for tomorrow because it's like my tourism day. So I ended up booking a tour for a very early in the morning. Waking up bright and early. It's 6 a.m. and I booked a tour of cool places in London, so let's go. All ready to go. I'm gonna try to find some coffee and then the tour starts at the London Tower. It's supposed to rain today and I do not have an umbrella, so we're gonna try to find one <laughs> if we can. On my search for coffee, I got to have a first look at the Excel Center. So all the Pokemon decor and banners that were still being set up, but uh, a lot of it was up already. So that was really awesome to see uh, everything decorated. There was a whole wall of the Pokemon character poster type designs as well. It was very awesome. I did find a coffee place, but the line was exceptionally long. So I did not end up getting coffee. I just had to take an Uber to my tour location. Otherwise I would have been late. Our tour was incredible. Our tour guide was French with a very thick French accent, which was amazing to hear. Um, the tour was like a total of like five hours or something. So it was quite long, but our first place was Tower of London. So we did get to explore that for a little while. I got to see the crown jewels. Uh, you can't take any pictures or videos of that, but that was amazing to see. I was trying to focus on kind of experiencing it and getting a little bit of video for the vlog, but mostly experiencing just being there. I took tons of photos because I absolutely love architecture. It's like one of my free time hobbies slash passions is architectural photography. So being in London was incredible for me. I was like living the dream with all the history and the architecture there was amazing. Then we jumped on a boat and did a little mini boat tour to our next 
next destination. The most common item to find, it is this. Cigarette butt? Oh, nearly. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a clay pipe. It's about 400 years old. The boat tour was also great. Our tour guide, uh, even though being French, has lived in London for like, I think it was like 15 years or something. So explained a lot of the history. Then we headed to Whitehall where we got to see the Royal Horse Guards and we got to catch the changing of the guards as well, which was amazing to see. I have never seen anything like this in my life. So to see so much tradition and history pretty much playing out right in front of you is just incredible. At this point, I was very happy I booked this this tour because I didn't know what to expect or if it was gonna be super cheesy but it was really really awesome because I was a part of the tour group I got to see everything close up I was right next to it as well which was really great I didn't have to stand in like a horde of people so that was incredible as well I was just so happy with this whole experience I'm back in my room, as you can see. <laughs> I lost my tour group, unfortunately. I went to buy an umbrella because it started raining and then I turned around and they were gone and I tried to find them, but they were long gone wherever they went. So then it was just raining out and I was just kind of standing around. So I found a cute little cafe. I had like a little tuna melt and some coffee. And then I just walked around in London and like took a ton of really beautiful photos. So that was nice. The rest of the day, I was just chilling in my hotel room, playing some PTCGO until I met up with my co-casters. We all got our badges for check-in. And then I had a very long day the next day going to the Pokemon Center. So I pretty much just ate dinner after that and headed to sleep. We're back. Today is rehearsal day. I will not be able to film um, because obviously everything's top secret on lockdown. I didn't even show you all. Look at this. Look at this beautiful badge. Look at the lanyard. The Pika. So cute. Walking to the event hall, we got to see a ton more decorations that had been put up in the Excel Center, which was amazing. So the casters and I all walked to our spot. We did some audio checks, some sound checks. We got to see everything and it was incredible. <laughs> Caster squad. And then we were just sitting tight until we got to head to the Pokemon Center. Pokemon Center was one of my favorite parts, even though it was absolutely super hectic. I got to be a part of the influencer squad that headed into the Pokemon Center early, which was great. We got exclusive access uh, before everybody else got to see it, which was incredible to be a part of. Uh, I was on a FaceTime call. I think I stayed there probably two times longer than everybody else that came in with me uh, because I was trying to figure out what to buy. I was on a call with Taco a video call and I was also trying to get tons of b-roll and I was meeting a ton of people which was amazing not to mention putting stuff into bags to actually purchase so I ended up buying way too much stuff to the point where I had to buy a whole nother luggage bag to check and bring home back to the US but it was such an amazing experience it was huge the actual center you know the amount of people once people started heading in and actually getting to experience it not just the influencer group that was awesome to see everybody shopping and just enjoying what they love and getting to pick up awesome pieces of Pokemon merch that are just absolutely adorable.
I've gone through. I bought all my stuff. Well, actually, I haven't bought it yet because I went back to do B-roll and then I asked about the Bulbasaur. So I haven't tallied up everything. I feel like I'm about to spend a lot of money right now. <laughs> I got more stuff while I was filming B-roll. Oh, no. This is both my Pokemon Center haul as well as what I got gifted to me from Pokemon. Thank you so much, Pokemon. And I bought a jumbo Bulbasaur that I had absolutely no idea how I was supposed to get on the plane back home with me. <sighs> I'm tired. I'm sleepy. <laughs> um, I have to steam my outfits, my casting outfits still. I also have acquired way too much stuff from the Pokemon Center and now I have to buy another luggage to check. I only checked one bag here and I do have two check bags so at least I can check two bags. Um, <laughs> no one told me or else it's gonna be like this. My wallet was never safe. It was not safe. Boo's first world. I feel like most of the stuff I got, I'm honestly going to like frame a lot of it because this is my first world and I'm casting it so wild. So I had to get a lot of stuff. Plus I was picking up stuff for my friend who's watching Noodles, my lizard, um, and then for Taco who can't be here with me too. And then like two of my other friends as well. So even though of course they place limits, like you can't get more than five of anything. Um, but it was just a lot of different things that I wanted. So it's a lot, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> so I wanted to show some close-ups of what I actually got at the Pokemon Center. This is the Pikachu plush that is modeled after Beef Eaters. Super cute, very high quality absolutely adorable and then of course we have the rose raid as well i tried to chill on the plushies but some of them i just couldn't pass up like this snom i just had it i don't have a snom in my collection yet uh and then a baby togepi this is one of the sitting cuties i also do not have a baby togepi and it's adorable and then i got a pikachu and a piplup of the sitting cuties as well then there's the Switch Cases. This is the Switch Case you could buy from the Pokemon Center. Super cute accents. It has 2022 on the back. You open it and then it's pink on the inside for the little stitching accents. Um, there's a spot to hold your games. And then it even comes with like a little slip in if you have a Switch Lite so that you could really do both. This is the competitor Switch. So people who compete at Worlds get competitor bags. I was lucky enough to get one, not because I was competing, but because I was a caster, they also gave us competitor bags. So similar to the one you could buy, but just blue accents on the inside. Still very, very cute. The world's logos on them were also different. One was colorful and one was just like a black and white version. So absolutely adorable. This is one of my favorite things that I got. I actually went back to get these because I missed them when I first walked through, but they're like Pikachu emojis pretty much. So they have little emotions on there. Then the traditional London uh, <laughs> lanyard as well with the Pikachu Roserade. This was by far my favorite thing. The patches, Pokemon patches that were kind of like London themed, Gala region themed. I love this. Then I got a fanny pack, uh, <laughs> a little like miniature bag pretty much that has all the designs of the Pokemon posters, the music posters, little Pokeball tags, super cute. Um, this is now the second fanny pack that I own. So, and they're both actually Pokemon fanny packs. So I'm just becoming a fanny pack fan apparently. Then we have sleeves, both the Pikachu, I think those are the competitor sleeves and then the regular ones that you could buy. We have pins, these are uh, pins that are the same as the ones on the lanyard, except they say 2022 in London on them. We also have the competitor pin, so the competitors who played would also get this one. The deck box, ooh, I really like the deck box. I actually bought an extra to be able to um, give away as well, so look out for that soon. But inside there's two little compartments, so you can fit two decks in it, which are really nice. You can pop them out pretty easily as well. And it had the two main characters on both of them, which was super nice, but it also comes with dividers and the dividers were so cute. The three starters, I thought that was absolutely adorable. So I really like the deck boxes. I got this little pencil pouch. I don't own a single pencil pouch. So I was like, well, I'm gonna get this one. <laughs> Let's do it. 
a giant magnet. That was super nice. And then two play mats here. So this was the play mat you could buy at the Pokemon Center, the shop. It actually has a little uh, keychain holder thing as well. I forgot what those things are called. I don't know why. Uh, and then, yeah, this is what the mat looks like. It's super pretty. I actually think I like the traditional mat more than the competitor one, which we're about to see too. This one's just absolutely beautiful. This is the competitor mat. So all the competitors at Worlds got this mat. And then of course on it, it says competitor, which differentiates it. And obviously the design as well makes it different. So pretty. I'm sitting here about to eat dinner and they just released the schedule for next season. Pokemon players had been waiting for Pokemon to release these. These are the dates and the locations for our regional events for the 2023 season. So I will make sure to link this below. Check out the page, see if there's any events near you because these are amazing events to attend, to play in. It's always a blast. So I hope to see you all at some of these events. And then the next day we have the kickoff of the 2022 Pokemon World Championships. This, of course, is my first ever World Championship, so I was experiencing all of this for the very first time. I was at the venue extremely early for hair and makeup because this is also the start of my work days for casting, but I was able to run out and experience the opening ceremony alongside everyone else in the crowd. We got some really cool announcements. The Pokemon Unite game had some awesome stuff. The new map that was coming out, Rayquaza was joining the game. Uh, that's now out, so you can actually play that now. That was huge, and I was very excited seeing that. And then we actually got to see this incredible hype video that I can't even really describe. It perfectly encapsulated the emotion behind what it's like for these players to become world champions. It was amazing. It was actually, I found this out later, based off of a very infamous 2014 finals match for the Pokemon video game. In this finals match, one of the players had a Pachirisu that nobody was expecting, and it ended up doing so well, survived a meteor attack from a Salamence that was super hype. Everyone was cheering on this little tiny Pachirisu, and it ended up being a world World champion Pachirisu after surviving so much through the battle it stood next to its partner Garchomp and took down the little lawn Rotom for the win. It was huge and of course the player had a little Pachirisu plush as well. You know I know absolutely nothing about VG but then learning the lore of this match and going back and watching it is just so cool to see. And then flash forward back to the opening ceremony and the Pachirisu hits the screen and everyone just starts going wild for it. It was amazing. Whoa, story unfolds in Hello everyone and welcome back in to our Pokemon TCG World Championships. I am Shelby Boo here next to Kyle Puka Sukovic and we are both so excited to be here casting with you today. You know Kyle, this is actually my first Pokemon World Championship that I've attended in person and not only that but to be sitting here casting next to you. Huge honor, and I'm just so excited to see how the rest of today and the rest of the event unfolds. But uh, how are you feeling, Kyle? This is not your first rodeo, so <laughs> what been are here you a thinking? few times. Uh, but no, awesome to be here with you. Uh, I'm glad to have you here at the desk with me. 
And yeah, it's just awesome to be like, we're in the middle of it. Yes, we were right in the middle of it. The caster desks were above the stage, above the entire stands of people. We were all up there casting together for the big screens. So for anyone unaware, this was only my second event I've ever casted for Pokemon. So the pressure was definitely on. I was feeling it. This was the world stage, the most amount of people watching the most amount of people at the event itself. There was so much pressure, but I had a ton of fun casting games with Puka. And then we're just gonna see a double knock here, Kyle. The stage itself was immaculate. The decor they had was stunning. It was super immersive as well. When you were there close up watching the matches, it was like you were just in a whole other place. You felt just engulfed in Pokemon world. It was really, I can't even describe it. I wish you could have been there with me because it was, it was amazing. In some of my free time away from casting, I watched a couple matches up close or on the big screen. You know, getting to see some of the world's best players playing Pokemon is like my dream come true. So I was nerding out the whole time. Day one, we had a whirlwind of matches, some wild games, some interesting moves from our players, and it was a blast to cast, baby. <laughs> All right, I'm done, I'm done. Ooh, that is so risky if you're gonna use Pokestop here. With oh, one man. Mew VMAX in the discard already, there's a chance you could discard your second one and then you just don't have an attack this turn. Oh, oh no, wow. here we go. Here we go. <gasps> oh, it's the first card. Oh, no. Kyle, it hurts. It hurts to see, actually. And I think Emery knows exactly what that means. Both new v oh, are in no. the discard pile, and this turn that looks so promising just turned uh, into a disaster. The audience for everything was absolutely amazing. Even though I met so many people, especially after I got off the stage from casting, I got to meet tons of people who came over to say hi. I didn't get to record any of it. I was so sad. I didn't have anyone there with me to record any of these moments, which was a huge bummer. But I did get a lot of pictures with people. So thank you so much if you came up and said hello. That meant a lot to me. I did get this small video though. I finally am capturing meeting people that I get to bring my cards to. So here we go. Y'all wanna be in my vlog? Wanna be in my vlog? Yo, Say hi! Hey. I got cards! Hey, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes! After long days casting, I did get to go to a sponsorship dinner hosted by Potown Store, one of my, actually my first ever sponsor on the channel and such an amazing sponsor as well. It was on a boat restaurant type deal. It was super fancy. I had a blast, met so many incredible people and it was just so much fun. Look who I found! I look good. Hello! No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I it was a picture. But yeah, actually, this is so fancy. Last day casting, we're doing senior finals. Have my pin. It's gonna be great. Finals day was uh, kind of rough for me. Not gonna lie, uh, my voice was about to be lost. I almost lost my voice. Recovery attackers, backup attackers that you prepare as well. <clears throat> <clears throat> After casting senior finals, I got to sit down and watch the finals match for our masters division. It came down to Daichi versus Andre, and it was an amazing match to watch. Two flying Pikachus facing off in the finals. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. My name is Daichi Shimada. I'm from Japan. I am TCG finalist. My name is Andrzej Gubal and I'm a TCG Masters player from Czech Republic. Playing a mirror match tomorrow and compared to my opponent, I'm playing B-Barrel, which helps me draw cards. And I think that's gonna help me win the game. 
Winning worlds would mean world to me. I've been playing this game for 10 years almost. I played day two four times and I never even made top 32, so this would be a big accomplishment for me. Winning world is my dream. Getting to watch the final smash from the stands was next level. I had a blast. It was so intense as well. I was rooting for both of these players because I saw the matches that led them both to this position and just to see them playing their hearts out was really great to see. But Andre did end up taking the W, becoming the 2022 Masters Division World Champion for the TCG. It was incredible to watch, to witness, and then all we had left was the award ceremony. I am officially done casting the world championship for the Pokemon TCG in 2022, baby, in London, wah. I am so tired. My voice is like shot. I was struggling so much in the seniors finals casting. My voice was um, not doing well. Yeah, I'm tired. There's still the closing ceremony, which I really want to be there for, but I just need to rest right now and just take a second. <laughs> All right, I took a power nap, got an energy drink, and we're going in for our closing ceremony, baby. To recap the action, I have some wonderful casters for all of you. Got some new friends here on the couch. I just, I mean, first of all, that final was crazy. This, this, the VG person, you know, I actually feel the one was wasn't As you can see, I absolutely lost it when they announced EX Pokemon. <laughs> I've just been waiting for a new mechanic for so long. I was so excited and to hear that they've been working on comeback mechanics and bringing that into the format is huge.
Then I got to be super close up and watch all of our champions on the stage. Each age division, we got to see the winners and of course the runner ups as well get their trophies. It was incredible to watch, you know, just sitting there watching all of our amazing players grab their trophies, something they've worked years toward. It really just hit home for me, um, kind of why I am involved with this community and in this hobby in the first place. You know, this is so much more for so many people in this hobby. It's not just playing cards at a table like it seems. It's, uh, there's so much behind it. Like your friends, your family are involved with it most of the time. It's something you're working toward. You're dedicating a huge chunk of your life towards something that you're passionate about, that you want to improve in, that you're having fun being involved with as well. And to see all of that hard work and that passion and that camaraderie up on the stage just meant a lot to me. This is why I want more people to get involved with this hobby, with this game. And then this happened. That is next year's location for the Pokemon World Championships. Okay, here it is. Yokohama. Japan, I was so excited when they announced this. Japan is so meaningful to me. Taco and I's first trip together was to Tokyo and we told each other we were gonna go back in 2023 to get married in Japan. So now we get to do it with all of our friends and right before Worlds, oh my gosh, it's huge for me. I am so excited. And that was it. That was the end of our 2022 World Championships. I walked over and held my energy drink up to Andre to try to get him to lift his trophy and it actually worked. He saw me and lifted it up. <laughs> That night, I also attended the staff party for Pokemon Worlds, so I got to meet tons of people that I will be working with in the future. I hadn't eaten all day, so I was like hunting down food, trying to uh, not starve in there as well, but it was so much fun. It was super cute, Pokemon themed. We had a giant ship above us, which was wild. It was such a cool venue, super cool people. I got to chat with my fellow co-casters, the casters of the other games, and it was just all around a very, very good time. Now all there was left to do was head home. I was sad to go, but I was also exhausted, ready to sleep in my own bed again. And I was just reminiscing on the trip already um, by the time I was packing up everything, driving in the Uber with my Bulbasaur. Um, I did get my Bulbasaur onto the plane with me. Luckily, I just brought it as my carry-on and they didn't ask any questions. So my flight home, I also didn't have anyone sitting next to me. So my Bulbasaur sat next to me on the flight, which was cool. Um, so that was great. I didn't have to pay any extra money or anything, which was huge. Then I landed back in Nashville, my home state. But before I end this vlog, I'll give my own little surprise to you all. I will actually be moving next year to a new place. And that will be announced very soon. So stay tuned on Boo's life updates. <laughs> And I will hopefully see you all competing in the 2023 season for our Pokemon games. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you later. Bye -bye.